Hello, a very good morning to all. I must echo Kimberly's observation that um, we were pleasantly surprised with um, the, the turnout this morning. I think particularly, uh, Ping Ping and I, we are, um, um, I think we, we, we are really honoured to have so many of you this morning to take a Saturday morning off to hear us um, rattle on on a topic as dry as personal income tax. Um, as you probably have made out, I'm Hilda Liao. Um, my co-presenter and colleague today is Lim Ping Ping. We are from the International Assignment Services arm of PwC. What we hope to share with you today, um, we hope that at the end of today's session, you'll be able to go away with um, some basic knowledge of personal tax. Um, we hope that in this crucial month of April, when a lot of you are trying to meet deadlines and ensure payments of taxes um, for 2013, that you will know what to do in terms of keeping yourself current, in terms of complying, and how you can maximise your benefits um, in, when, when you're filing your tax returns. Okay, so I'm going to use the term personal income tax today um, very frequently. So PIT is short for what we are covering today. Let's first look at um, the current environment that Malaysian, Malaysians are operating under, our tax regime right now. We are seeing, um, and I'm sure most of you already know, that we are currently in a self-assessment system, which means that um, the tax authorities no longer formally assess you. I don't know how many of you remember the past when um, after you file a tax return, you will receive a Form J, yeah, and you make payments 30 days after that. And if there are additional taxes to be paid, you get assessed an additional, additional um, Form J called the JA, or if um, there is a reduction in taxes, a JR, a, re, um, a reduced a reduction in assessment. Okay? Now, all that has, is something of the past. Now, as a taxpayer, you have this responsibility of ensuring that you know the tax law in Malaysia. How tax operates in Malaysia, you need to have that basic knowledge. You need to be able to um, understand some of the tax legislation and the tax authorities supplies you with all that knowledge in their uh, e-website. Okay, the Hasil website. At the same time, you have to ensure timely reporting of your income, timely payment of your um, taxes, and the tax authorities no longer officially assess you. Okay? So what happens then? What does the tax authorities do? IRB is still existing. Okay? They spend time policing. Right? Their main activity surrounds an audit. So, what they do is, because you assess yourself, the tax authority spends their time ensuring that what you report is correct. And this has been becoming more and more rampant, so much so that the tax authorities have found it necessary to provide a very comprehensive um, audit framework for the general public. In this audit framework, you will find that the tax authorities um, places some limits to um, you know, what the revenue is supposed to do in the event of an audit, what you as a taxpayer um, needs to be aware of and what you're required, your, your right and your responsibility of providing information, as well as some guidance for tax agents like us. Okay? Now, what is obviously everybody zooms into in this audit framework is does the tax authorities give any guidance on if a non-compliance happens, what is the financial impact on you as a taxpayer? So that is the important part, and um, I will touch on it a little bit later on into the session. Okay? What is also new is, and this we um, have seen it happening in the, next, in the last two or three years, whilst the legislation provides the tax authorities a right to impose penalty on you as taxpayers when you file or make payments late, they have started to diligently impose penalties of between 20 to 35% on taxpayers. 
Okay? We will also look at um, this new uh, penalty regime for late filers and um, late payers. We also know that the revenue has this increasing budgets on a year-to-year -year basis. The budget for 2014, for your knowledge, is 140 billion. Okay? Um, last year, the tax authorities were given a bud the IRB was given a budget of 130 billion, and they nearly met it. So it's um, it's very likely that this 140 billion will um, be met as well. Now, it's not all bad news. We also have some, um, the, the tax authorities also actually give us some benefits, some benefits to the taxpayers as well. The, um, the tax profession has been, um, over the years, been lobbying for a, sim a simplification of the tax system in Malaysia to make it easy for people like you and I to um, ensure compliance. Okay? So we have been lobbying for simplification of our tax um, system our tax administration, and of course, a reduction in tax rates, okay, to be more aligned with the region. Um, this we have seen happening, okay. Again, this is an area that I will touch on it later on. Rates have dropped, and with effect from 2014, some, some um, pretty significant rate drop, okay. Now, we know that the tax authorities have been investing in a... Um, substantially in, in um, upping the grade of their IT infrastructure. And for that, we see um, you know, all the e-facilities that we get. Okay? For those of you who are familiar with the Hasil website, you will see that you, know, you have e-payments, you have e-MTD, you have um, e-filing of forms, forms M, B, B, E, M, T, B, T. Yeah? So more and more, um, you... you you are getting all these facilities from the tax authorities. And to encourage users, um, to encourage the general public to use their e-facilities, the Malaysian tax authorities have given, okay, and this will impact most of you today, the f a grace period of 15 days to file provided you do an e-file. So those of you who need to file by 30th of April, maybe a show of hands, so that uh, I can get, get a gauge of the, the make. 30th of April, if you e-file, you have 15 days grace period. Your deadline is the 15th of May. And that applies to the payment that you need to top up, the tax payment that you need to top up as well. For those of you who are filing, I believe the rest of you who are filing, who needs to file by the 30th of June, if you e-file your Form B, the due date for you is the 15th of July, and that again applies to a top up, the top up of tax settlement. Okay? Now, it's, when I said it's not all bad news, you know, the tax system has always been very lopsided. It's us paying to the tax authorities and us being penalised if we don't uh, comply with tax rules. Now, this lopsided thing was like tax authorities made slight amends to this lopsided system uh, in 2000, starting from 2013, when they say that if you've overpaid taxes, I held on to your tax credit for too long, I will pay you an interest when I refund you that money. Okay? And the cutoff is, again, if you e-file, they will pay you a 2% interest if they refund you your credits after 90 days. Any other modes of filing other than e-filing, it's 100, if they pay you back, if they refund you, after 120 days, they will give you a 2% interest, 2% per annum, yeah? Okay? Most of you already know this, self-assessment. You need to Declare all your income. You need to correctly assess and compute your tax liability. The tax authorities have provided um, a huge amount of, amount of um, tax guidance through public rulings. And all these are published in their website where you need to understand the law and the technical side of um, filing income taxes. Form Bs 
need to be filed by the 30th of April for individuals without business income, 30th of June for individuals with business income. Payments of outstanding taxes need to be paid by those dates as well. It ties in with your date of filing. You need to keep records for seven years. Okay? Now, this hasn't changed even though the uh, statute of limitation, that means um, the open years for the tax authorities to be able to um, assess you for the past, yeah, has been reduced to five years effective from 2014. Keeping records for seven years has still remained as seven years. So you still need to keep your records for seven years for all the claims that you make for all your business records that supports your tax filing. Tax authorities, I mentioned, their main activities around audit. Audit can usually come in two means, either a desk audit or a field audit. Okay? So, um, as the name implies, a desk audit means the tax authority sits at his or her desk and requests for information from certain taxpayers. Okay? So if, and, and these are done regularly. It need not be that um, they've suspecting that you are you're omitting information or or not declaring your the your actual income okay they do it regularly because this is their job now they don't officially assess you any longer okay so uh, a desk audit as the name suggests is um, the tax authorities requesting from inf for information from you okay um, in the guidelines, it says that in the protocol, it says that tax authorities must give you at least 14 days to provide those information. They cannot give you less time than that. Okay? You present the documents to them or either send it to them and um, they will just check it through, ensure that everything ties with your tax return filing and um, they will give you a report after that. Okay? A field audit means they come to your premises and checks on your records. Okay? Now, Again, they need to give you ample time to prepare because at the time that they call for an audit, they will need to give you all the list of information that they will need to look at. It may involve an interview as well. Okay? Um, in an interview, you can either have an interpreter with you, you can also have a tax agent with you, that's allowed. Okay? Now, uh, again, it doesn't mean that a field audit is carried out only when they suspect that uh, you're not complying. Okay? Usually, when they suspect a non-compliance, it ends up with an investigation. And in, in an investigation, the tax authorities can simply turn up at your door. Okay? They need not give you prior notice. Okay? Once you have been audited, that same year's assessment will not be looked at again. If they're satisfied and it's been agreed, any additional assessments or reductions have been finalised and payments additional payments made, that year's assessment will never be looked at again, even though if they find out something later on. Okay? Let me just take a uh, note, give you two tips here. An audit usually is for one assessment year's records only. So they will review one year's assessment records. But if the tax authorities um, find out about a willful evasion, okay, that you're willfully um, not providing information to them or incorrectly reporting your, your um, income to the tax authorities, they could open up the audit to five years. So imagine giving five years records, yeah? That's going to take a long time.